these three items should not actually be this friendly attached to each other. I have the easiest job in the world because every power supply is this. It is an incoming line with some kind of positive voltage, a switch, an inductor, and some out outgoing positive voltage. And then the outgoing negative voltage, let's call this VO for output voltage and this VI for input voltage. There's also a negative VI, but that's also grounded. These are essentially tied together. And in some power supplies, like you still need a second switch. There you go. Every power supply in the world is this. So basically, what's at bay here is this inductor is the heart of the power supply and in fact of every power supply. An inductor or a transformer or any kind of magnetics, if you hear the word magnetics, that's what's doing the magic here. What makes an inductor so magical is that the inductor has this special characteristic which you can express as the voltage over the inductor. So if we just regard this inductor, say this is the positive side, this is the negative side, the voltage over the inductor is equal to L di dt. The voltage is equal to the inductance value, which is a constant specific to each inductor times the change of current over time. So, what happens? If I put a constant voltage here is a constant voltage over time. Horizontal axis is time vertical axis is voltage. What happens to the current? If I express the current as the blue line on the vertical axis, the current does this. Goes up linearly. This is all you need to know. So what can we do with this? Well, what we can do is, hmm, let's see. So we have an input voltage. For instance, let's say we have 10 volts here and we have 5 volts here. So, okay, let's just m m muck around. This is constant. Let's just say we have a really, really, really big capacitor here. Giant capacitor, which makes sure that this is always exactly 10 volts. Here, this capacitor, also really, really big, always 5 volts. So let's close this upper switch, which means that the positive side of the inductor is connected to VI, and the negative side of the inductor is connected to VO. There is now a constant voltage of 10 minus 5 equals 5 volts over this inductor. And this starts happening. The current increases linearly. All right? Current keeps increasing and keeps increasing, gets kind of high, and at some point there is a lot of current going through this inductor. So the current is really high right now, and we want to do something about it. So first of all, let's just stop this madness. Let's just open this switch to make sure the current doesn't go up again. But now we have a problem, because there is current going through this inductor. Uh, that is suddenly stopped because we open this switch. There is no more current path. There's this is this side is open, and what this means is that according to this equation, di dt, the change in uh, current over time, because we suddenly open the switch, this change in current is really high. 
So this term is really high. This is a constant, which means the voltage is really, really, really high. We don't want that bad because any practical switch will get destroyed uh, when it's exposed to high voltages. So let's just do the basically only other thing we can do. Let's close this switch. Now there is a current path here, but on the input there is zero volts and on the output there is five volts. So the sign of the voltage has changed. This is now the positive side and this is now the negative side of the inductor. So what happens to the current? First, we put a positive voltage on the uh, inductor and the current kept increasing linearly. If you put a negative voltage on it, the current decreases linearly. So just imagine time going on. At this instant, we changed from the upper to the lower switch. So now the current goes down and if I would be really diligent and maybe if I had planned this episode, I would have extended the axes to show that there is a uh, negative voltage here all of a sudden, but obviously I didn't. Whatever. <laughs> anyway, so what we have now is the basics of a switching regulator. You can see that this, this type of arrangement where two switches alternate with an inductor in between and some kind of fixed input and output. This is conducive to current flowing from the high voltage side to the low voltage side. It's not flowing continuously, it's going in this sawtooth shape. It's first increasing, then decreasing, then increasing, then decreasing as you close the upper and lower switch. But this is the basic idea of every power converter. By the way, if you ever wondered how to remove permanent marker from your desk? With flux remover, of course. Hold on. So I'm not kidding here. The DC to DC converter is really a very simple component. It's essentially a couple of switches and some kind of magnetic component. Uh, the inductor I showed is obviously for a non-isolated power supply, but you can replace that with a transformer and basically have the same uh, DC to DC converter, only isolated. So what am I actually looking at in these uh, power supply teardowns? Well, that's the input and output filtering. So if we see the input, like power going from the input to the output, as denoted by this arrow. You have to do some filtering on the input to make sure that the DC to DC converter gets the right voltage and also that the switching components don't kick out so much noise as to disturb your main supply. Similarly, the output filter makes sure that the output from this DC to DC converter, which is kind of like it's this sawtooth current waveform and usually there are some, some like small voltage spikes in it as well. It's kind of messy. This cleans it up and makes sure your power device gets clean power. And this is often uh, interesting to show people that don't know much about uh, power supplies. The actual DC to DC stage is often just a very, very small part of the power supply. Like in volume, it's maybe one tenth. It's all this other stuff that makes it bulky and actually Arguably, the other stuff, because it's more expensive, it's usually where manufacturers try to save costs the most. And this is the first, especially the input filter, but also the output filter. It's something where you can see if factories have gone just the extra mile to make sure quality is really high. 